So here's the honest truth. Most servers that I've encountered out there in the wild, and I would probably gander that most servers that are deployed out there in the wild are rack-mounted servers. So that begs the question, what's the deal with the racks? How do those racks really work? What is the right rack that you should buy? We'll take a look at the different rack options, and I'll even show you what I have in my environment and what makes this rack so special. So in this video, we're going to explore one of the most basic but very important kinds of technologies that there are, racks, and how servers hook into them. Let's go. Now this time we're talking about racks, and this is a really important technology. We're starting off with eBay yet again. Why? Because this is a great way to see all of our options that are available to us, because racks, yet again, come in many different shapes and sizes. Now for the most part, when we talk about racks, we're going to talk about racks as existing in our networking closet, or we're going to talk about racks as existing in a data center, and what we like to talk about when we talk about racks is we first have to figure out how many posts they're going to be. And I'm literally talking about how many corners are going to exist on this rack. What we see here is we've got a four post rack that we're looking at here. And what does that really mean? That means that if we were to go into the rack and take a look at it, you see these little holes here that are in the rack itself on these posts? We have four posts throughout the rack, all of which have holes for mounting to it. So that means when we look at this rack, we're either going to put servers in this way or we're going to put servers in that way. We've got them going in two different directions here. So we can mount our servers in either direction. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, why is that such a big deal? It's not uncommon to see servers mounted here so we could stack our servers like so, and then they go towards the back like this. Here, I know it's kind of cutting through that server there. I just kind of draw a dotted line. And then what we do on the back side is we mount our networking equipment coming down this way. So that way we can cable it such that the server can, can the back of the server can connect straight into the networking equipment. So we put the servers in on one side and the networking devices in on the other. Now this is, that's really a preference thing. That's not a rule. That's not how you're supposed to do it. It's not uncommon at all to walk into somebody else's data center and see the networking devices sitting at the top of the rack. In fact, those are very oftentimes called top of rack switches because they're very powerful switches that all of the servers connect into, and then they send all that server traffic off somewhere else. But what you might actually see in other data center environments is that those top of rack switches are mounted on, let's just say the back, even though there's really not a front and back, they'll just say the back because that's where the servers are, like so, and then they kind of look like this, coming down this way. So all of the servers will stack on top of each other and plug into the network switches like that. So what we like to see very often times, if this is going to be a rack that's going to host servers, we really need to have a four post rack. Servers are heavy and servers are big. And when we mount them to the rack, we use all four posts to connect them into. <clears throat> but if we were just using network devices, you could use a two post server. Basically a two post server is just cutting off this back half like so. And it looks like that, it looks like just a big and it looks like that. It looks like just a big arch here. And the network devices, because they're not as big or they're not as heavy, the two-post server usually has no problem holding them. <clears throat> so the big takeaway here, first of all, is that with a four-post server, the server is going to go all the way from front to back on a four-post server, whereas a network device typically won't even go halfway deep on a server, halfway deep on the rack. So when we want to rack our servers, we want to get a four post device. Now you can put the servers on one side and the network devices on the other. And that's oftentimes done to keep the cabling nice and clean. But we're going to talk about network cabling management later. So I'm not going to spoil that too much. Oh, let me jump back into this. Now the next thing is how are these racks secured? What you may want to focus in on is right there at the bottom of this rack. I know it's hard to see and I can't really draw on the screen when I'm using eBay here, but there's this little plate and then you see the holes that are facing towards the ground. You will literally bolt this thing into the cement. 
Because one of the worst things that can happen is somebody comes along and plugs in an Ethernet cable and uses just enough force to tip the whole thing over. We're talking about a tremendous amount of weight. So if enough force is applied to it, the tip over at that point could be unstoppable. And I have experienced this. I have gone into somebody else's closet and went to plug in an Ethernet cable and the whole thing just went over like that. And it was... It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. Now, it wasn't our, it wasn't actually like we were in there investigating somebody else's environment, trying to help them uh, figure stuff out. And they had not taken care of it. They had not secured those. Uh, but it was something that we probably should have checked first to make sure that it was secured before we went in there working on it. And uh, anyways, I digress. So that's one of the ways that you could actually mount your four post server in a data center environment. That's probably what you do in a smaller environment. Let me scroll down a little bit. Yeah. They make them on wheels. And this is almost identical to the one that I'm using that's sitting about five feet away from me. Now, as I have a little rack, a four post rack that is sitting on wheels and I can literally roll it around in my house wherever I want to go. So now we understand the posts. There could be four post racks or there could be two post racks, but servers are going to necessitate four posts because they will go all the way deep. We also understand that they could be mounted. They could be mounted to the floor or they could be on wheels, or they could even be mounted to the walls. You see this 6U wall mount server? That's right, this thing is bolted into studs. And you know where I've seen these the most? I've seen these the most in classrooms. I've seen these the most in schools. Because we have a large campus that's spread out through many different buildings, and we may need to interconnect one building to the next, but we don't have dedicated network closets, so we just slap these on the, right towards the ceiling in a classroom somewhere. I see these all the time in schools. So these are the mounting options, and these are the post options, but now what we need to talk about is arguably the most important thing, and that's units. What we're talking about units is we're talking about the number of holes that we have available here. One unit is equal to 1.75 inches in height, and one unit is almost always three holes. So let me jump into this screen one more time and we'll take a very close look at it. This is a 15U four post open frame. Well, let's give this one a click and we'll go in here and take a look at this. So we've got the rack like this. Now we see immediately it's a 15U and we know that typically there are three of these little holes per U, per unit, what we're looking at here. Now I wanna zoom in and I want you to pay close, close attention here. This rack is very nice in the sense that they label these U's for you. That way you know exactly where one U starts and one U stops. But what you need to do is you need to look very, very closely and see if every single hole is equally spaced. It's not, it's not equally spaced. That's why it's very, very important that when you rack something, you make sure that it fits exactly in a U the way that it was designed to do. In other words, I can't put something in the middle of 15 of the U15 and then have it extend down to the middle of U14. Because if I were to draw it out, this is what it really looks like. I'm gonna draw over here. We've got, let's say this is gonna be our U. We've got this kind of spacing in between our three holes of our U. And then the very next U is like right up snug next to it. Then we've got big spacing throughout the U. And then the next U is right up snug next to it. So there's not equal spacing between every single hole. And therefore, if I were to plug in, say, a 1U switch, that switch would have to occupy one U. It couldn't straddle one U to the next U. It's very, very important to understand that. Otherwise, you're going to mess up something pretty bad. And you're going to be fighting screws at that point to try and get them done. Now, the next thing we want to point out is how do these servers physically connect into this rack? This is another big thing to talk about. The servers themselves are not designed to attach directly to the rack. They're attached they're designed to sit inside of a set of rails. For Dell, they call these the ready rails. And I love the ready rails because they're so incredibly easy to use. They're not terribly expensive either. Here, let me give it a click and we'll try and zoom in on these so you can see how they work. Here, let me give one of these a click so we can zoom in on these so you can see how they work. All right, there we go. This is a pretty good picture of them right there. Now, that looks pretty complicated, like there's a whole bunch of stuff to it. 
It's actually not. The whole thing is spring-loaded, so you literally just line up one of these with a U and just snap it in. It literally just pops right in. Couldn't be easier to do if we tried to make it that way. No, it literally, you just walk up to it and you snap it right in into your, into your rack, and then you're good to go. So there's going to be one end for all four posts. So this end will snap into one side of the post, and then that end will snap into the other side of the post. And now the server is ready to drop into the rails, and it'll be distributing its weight across all four posts. Here, take a journey with me for a second. Let me just move. You see the camera? You see that right over there? Yeah, there's my rack right there. It is a four-post rack on wheels, and I've got a little server sitting in it. That's a Dell R710, the one I was talking about earlier. And it's got the ready rails just sitting there. So what I literally did is I snap in my rails where there's no server in it. And then with those rails, I can extend all the way out and literally drop the server down in it. It's got little knobs on it that align directly with the rails. It literally just drops right in. Then I can push it back into the rack. The cool thing about these ready rails is if I ever need to manipulate the intern, if I ever need to do troubleshooting or if I ever need to add RAM, I can literally just slide it out on the rails because the rails extend the entire length of the server out. I can pop the hood off, put my RAM in, slide it back in, and I never actually have to unrack the server to do any physical maintenance on it. So now we understand racks and how servers attach to those racks and how we may need to look about attaching them to the floor and how many U's we may need at the end of the day. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.